From my perspective, one of the amazing things about the Cancer Control Program is it's a group of volunteers, not paid, high quality individuals that leave their biases at home or in their office and come to the table for one purpose, to decrease the incidence and mortality of cancer in the state of Delaware. This uh, program is now, I guess, 12 years old. And it's, as Nick said, interesting that it's really a volunteer effort of a lot of different types of individuals. Just not physicians in our hospitals, but our state legislature, our governor, our lieutenant governor, our congressman in Delaware. We have a lawyer who runs the entire program. We have nursing. So it's really a true community cancer control project. And what's amazing is the volunteers that started this 12 years ago are still going strong. So when the cancer control program was put together, we were really given the charge, don't solve every cancer problem in the state at once, because frankly, that's impossible. So what we took the approach is what was feasible, and if you can use the cliche, the low hanging fruit, to make a difference quickly to prove to the state that an organization like this could make a difference. So colorectal screening became an obvious target because we had the tool to go ahead and screen that would change the outcome of colon cancer, not only in preventing cancer, but reducing mortality. So that became one of our first targets because everything was in place to do proper screening. It was just a matter of organizing it, funding it properly, and getting people in to do it. So that's how we picked that as our first project. And you knew, Steve, that there was uh... There was a big disparity between Caucasians and African Americans prior to the program. So yeah, in the in the early in the, in the early 2000s, across the United States, this screening was way underused everywhere, including Delaware. And we also, as we worked on this, set, found there was a disparity between our African American population and Caucasian population. So we already had a base of really good advertising going on, but we supplemented that with specifically targeted marketing with a really high-end marketing firm in Delaware that had two parts of their marketing campaign. One was for the general public, but one specifically was made for our African-American communities. And then on top of that, we had special initiatives in the African-American communities. Now, one of the things we did is we set up our program. We tried to keep activities local. There was not one glove that would fit all, even in a small state like Delaware. So each hospital system with their nurse navigator was charged with the, with the goal of developing their ideas for local marketing, going out into their community where they knew the, the, the needs were to be served. And that local penetration, I think, also helped us. Steve mentioned the nurse navigators, which were a critical portion of this to get out into the underserved areas. And then, for example, at our own institution here at the Graham Center, our community outreach personnel really went out into the underserved areas African-American, Hispanic populations to educate them about the importance of this. And then again, as Steve said, to make the process easy for them to go in, see their primary care, and then eventually get hooked up with either a surgeon or a gastroenterologist for their colonoscopy. You know, we solved the problem here of the cost of delivering colonoscopy, that everybody in the state was covered for that, whether they were insured or uninsured. So what that really, the barrier then became how do you convince people they ought to get it done? If your physician twists your arm and says you really have to do it, the odds are it'll happen then. So that's been part of our process here is to make sure our physicians are educated on top of pushing their folks into this and making ease into the procedure as good as it can be with nurse navigators. So all those elements came together to get our rates up to close to where we'd like to have them right now. The dollar value we put on the process of colonoscopy we set at the Medicare fee schedule rate, which I think is pretty much the same across the entire United States. So I think our economics in Delaware will apply most everywhere in the United States. And the economic evaluation basically showed across the state that the dollar values I calculated we saved more than offset a cancer treatment program that allowed two years of treatment for all the different cancers in the state. So I think clearly we did save healthcare dollars as well as improving the health of the state. Yeah, it's more cost effective to set up a program of screening, early detection and prevention than to treat patients with advanced disease. Pick whatever cancer you want where there's an opportunity for early detection and prevention, whether it's colorectal cancer, breast cancer, cervical cancer, more economical to move in that paradigm shift than to wait until patients get advanced disease and treat them then. And their quality of life is a lot better. Our state government and our entire community has been thrilled with the outcome 
of what we've been able to do. And again, we've built this thing on evidence, on measuring outcomes, and with that data always in front of everybody, there's not been a person in the state that doesn't want this program to continue. So right now it's indefinite. This program that we have been talking about demonstrates that if you put a group of quality individuals together, if they leave their biases at home and you give them the resources to reach their goal, that in this country that can be done. So for Congress, leave your biases at home, get to the table, give the country the resources in cancer research and cancer early detection and prevention, get this done so that we can take this disease off the list of mortality.